this is David. Today we're talking about Azure Active Directory B2C. B2C is short for Business to Consumer. And Azure AD B2C is a trusted authentication provider, which means that you can send a message to it with some user credentials, and it will return some information about whether or not that user is authenticated. If, it, if they are who they say they are, it'll return it in the terms, form of a token, a JSON web token, or JWT, uh, if it is uh, authenticated. Now, typically, when in most scenarios, when you send a message to a trusted provider, it'll require some user interaction. The user is redirected to a web page. They have to enter their username and password, for example, and then their, the token comes back and they get redirected to the page they want in the first place, and they, that then checks the web to see whether or not they actually have rights to that page. But sometimes you will want to perform this authentication without any user interaction. For example, if you want to run some tests automatically, some integration tests or some end-to-end -end tests, they're going to call maybe an API on the back end that is secured through some sort of authentication authorization. Then you don't want any user interaction. You want this thing to run as part of maybe a DevOps pipeline, for example. In that case, you want to be able to retrieve this token without any user interaction. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to create an Azure AD B2C tenant, and you can go back and look at that video if you want to. It's only a few minutes long, but here I assume that you've already got that set up. So we're going to first thing to do is switch directories to where that Azure AD B2C is, and mine happens to be right here. Now, when I'm in that directory, I'm going to search for B2C, and I really want this one, Azure AD B2C, right there. Step one here is app registrations. I click on app registrations and I will create a new registration by clicking this button right here. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it GCast app. I'll take the default here for the support of the account types, account as entity provider. For the redirect URL, I'm going to add https colon whack whack jwt.ms. And then I'll just take the defaults for the rest of this and click register. And in a few seconds, I have registered my application. I have one more step within the registration app the application. I need to go down to the authentication blade right here and scroll down a bit and check these two checkboxes, access tokens and ID tokens, and then save that. So now I've registered my application and I've configured it the way I want to. I need a couple of pieces of information from here. If I go back to the overview blade here, then one thing I'll need is this application or client ID. That's important, this long number here. I'm gonna, this icon lets me copy it to my clipboard and then I'm going to save it. I'll put it in this text file here and I will use that again later on. The other piece of information is an endpoint. I can click up here and see a list of endpoints. And this one at the top, Azure AD B2C OAuth 2.0 token endpoint. That's the one that I want. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to save that into this text file also. This is where I'm going to submit a request. I am going to post to this URL with some information about the user and get back a token. And if you look at this URL, you'll see it's https colon whack whack the domain name dot b2c login dot com slash domain dot on dot on microsoft dot com slash and then there's something in brackets right here policy name and then some more stuff. This part in brackets that's a placeholder. I'm going to have to replace that later on. So we'll come back to this, but that will be the URL once I update that policy name. All right, I am done with the app registration. I've got the pieces of information I want. Now I can go back to Azure AD B2C, and I want to look at the um, identity providers. Let me take a look at these right here. And you can see there's a lot of different identity providers that can be used with Azure AD B2C. If you want your users to log in using GitHub or Facebook or LinkedIn, you can do so. For this demo, I'm going to stick just with local accounts but you can configure all of these things because they're all using common protocols such as OAuth. So for, to keep this demo simple, I'm going to use local accounts. And you'll notice that in local accounts, we have the opportunity to let people create users with their username or their email or their phone number. I'll just take these two. That'll be fine. But I can change that. And that affects when I go in to create a new user right here. If I click on Users, 
Right now the only user is me, but I'm going to add a new user here, a new local account. It'll be an Azure AD B2C user. And for my sign-in method, you can see that because I had email and username passwords, those are the options that are given here. So I'll, I'll select username. I'm going to create a user called GCast. Or I'll call it, how about GCast user. And the name will be GCast user. And I can specify, I don't want to save that password in Edge, thanks very much. Um, I can give it the first name and last name if I want to. First name GCast, last name user, that's fine. Uh, and I can let it auto-generate a password, or I could create the password myself. Why not just let it auto-generate that password? Mojo006, I like that one a lot. I might have picked that one anyway. So the password is mojo006, and the username is gcast user right here. And that's it. I will create this user. And there is right there, gcast user, and it, there's no way to get the password back right now, but I saved it, so I'm good. Let me go back to Azure Active Directory B2C, and the final thing I need to do is to create a user flow by selecting the user flow blades and clicking the new user flow button. And a user flow is just a set of steps for doing something inside of Azure AD B2C, like to sign up or to sign in or change your password. In this case, I want to uh, use this ROPC type flow. These are all templates. And the problem with these templates is they all require some user interaction. This is the only one that doesn't require any user action. It's the resource owner password credential. So I'm gonna select that as my template and click on create. And then it'll ask me a few questions like, what's the name of this flow? I'll call it GCast. All right. Actually, the name will be B2C underscore one underscore GCast. I'm going to keep a name of that right now. The flow will be B2C underscore one underscore GCast. And then the next thing it asks me are, what claims do I want to provide? It shows a few of them here. If I click show more. There's a bunch more. And remember I said that a token is encrypted JSON. Well, that JSON can contain not only information that the user is valid, but it can also contain information about the user. So if I wanted to get include the display name and the email address and the given name and uh, how about the surname and so on. All this information here, I can add that. I can add as much as I want to in here, and sometimes this is important. Maybe for a th authorization, the, the API or the resource we're trying to access wants to know that they, only people in a certain region are allowed to this, or only people in a certain city, things like that. You can add that. So all that can be part of that, and so the trust authority will not only be saying, yeah, this is, person, this is who they say they are, but also this is their name, and this is their email address, and so on. So I'll select a few of those right here. And then I'll create this flow. And that just takes a few seconds. Now it's done. And now I'm ready to go. I've created my, I've registered my application. I have at least one user and I've created a user flow. Now a user flow is actually a type of policy. And so our policy name here can be replaced with the name of our user flow. So I'm going to grab this and just make a copy of it down there and replace this policy name placeholder and remove everything including the brackets with the name of this user flow right there. Now this is my URL. I want to post to this URL and in the body of that post I want to include information about the user which I have here. Now you can do you can do this in code. You can do it through curl. You can do it through a tool like Postman, or uh, I have a couple of plugins here that I'll show you. There's YARC is a Chrome plugin, yet another REST client, or here's a nice simple one plugin for Edge called Boomerang. I could post to this as well, and I want to post to that URL right there. Let me grab this and copy it and paste it in here. I want this to be a post, and these are the fields that I need to post in the body, and include in the body. First of all, I want to make sure that the type is a form. 
I'm not sending JSON or XML, I'm sending form data. This is the same kind of data you would send if you filled out a form on a web page and you click submit. Generally, most of the time, that submit button is posting to some web page in the back end, and in the body of that will be all the names and values of the fields you filled out. So let's fill this all out inside of here. The username was GCast user. The password is Mojo 6 uh, Grant type is password. Scope is open ID plus offline access plus this client ID right here. So there are actually three different values for scope. The client ID is also the client ID right here. And the response type is token. So once I have this, I should be able to send this post, HTTP post, to this endpoint and get a response back. And hopefully, oops, I hit the wrong button, and get a response back. And I did, and I got a 200, which is a, a good thing, and I got an access token right here. So I can pull that access token out, and I've done so without any user interaction. I could do this all in code and have it run automatically as part of my automated tests, for example, and use that to call an API. In this video, I've shown you how to configure Azure Active Directory B2C to do retrieve a token automatically with no user interaction. This is David. Thank you for watching.